WOY-TV now presents another in the series of special reports to the people of Iowa by Governor Leo Hoig. Governor Hoig. As a citizen and as the governor of the great state of Iowa, I shall never be satisfied until the farm income provides the farmer a standard of living which is comparable to that of the other citizens of our nation. It is with that in mind that the, uh, the Iowa governor called this conference of governors on October 13th and 14th in order that we could make some recommendations as to how to solve the present farm price squeeze. We had in mind, of course, first to apprise the nation as a whole that the farm crises was their concern that the economy of this country and the prosperity of this country could not survive without the prosperity of the farmer. And secondly, our objective was to present recommendations which would bring about an immediate solution of the problem and ultimately a permanent solution. With reference to the immediate solution, the governors who represented eight Midwestern states advocated that the U.S. Department of Agriculture go into the markets and purchase pork products. We asked that they purchase them immediately in order that the price of pork could be bolstered. Of course, we were very happy to learn that this past week, the U.S. Department of Agriculture is now going into the market. And since that statement was made, the price of hogs have picked up 50 to 75 cents per hundred which of course is not sufficient, but is at least one step forward. In addition to recommending an immediate purchasing program, we also recommended that we should do more ourselves in order to bring about the increase in consumption of farm products. We do not recognize that this problem is as much that of production, but more that it's a problem of increased consumption. And for that reason, in the state of Iowa, we will form what is known as an Iowa Farm Products Committee. And we've urged that the other states in the Midwest form similar committees in order that we can increase the consumption of particularly our meats, pork, beef, and mutton. We know that in Iowa, a few years ago, that the number one item on the breakfast table was ham and eggs and, or bacon and eggs. And throughout the nation, that was the case. And then we found that the people of the Southwest and the South started selling and merchandising citrus fruits. And now I'm very unhappy to report, but it is the case that citrus fruits happens to be the number one item on our breakfast table. Certainly we should not permit that situation to remain in the future. And for that reason, this Iowa Farm Products Committee can do something to meet that challenge. We can sell Iowa farm products and put back on the breakfast table as the number one item, bacon and eggs or ham and eggs. And of course, as governor of the state of Iowa, I'd like to urge that you start the campaign by doing it at your own breakfast tables. It helps not only the farm economy, but it also will help the economy throughout the state of Iowa. Every merchant, every professional man, every businessman, is dependent upon the prosperity of the farmer. And if we can increase the consumption of his products, certainly we can increase his income. This afternoon I had the pleasure of listening to Mr. Pendleton, who is one of the staff members of Secretary Benson. He spoke down at Winterset at their harvest festival this afternoon. There he pointed out that the U.S. Department of Agriculture was increasing the export of farm products. And I was particularly pleased to learn that 20% of the, the lard that we produce in this country is exported to other countries, and that $3,143,000,000 worth of farm products in 1955, the fiscal year ending July 1955, were exported to foreign countries. That would account for the production of all of the acres in Iowa. $3,143,000,000 dollars 
of farm products exported. Of course, we hope that that will be increased. I would like to see that increased at least 20%. But we at home can do something ourselves about it, and that, of course, is, as I said, increase the consumption. This coming week, I hope to have at the governor's office farmers and people who are interested in farm-related industries, bankers and other citizens of, of Iowa, join me and form this Iowa Farm Products Committee. We will do our best to increase the selling, improve the selling and the merchandising of our farm products. And in addition to that, we should also work on the improvement of distribution. Marketing of farm products can be and must be improved. This past week, I had the privilege of being at uh, Sioux City. Up there, the Chamber of Commerce and the farmers in the Sioux City stockyards had a wonderful day, which they called Siouxland Pork Day. There they stressed, of course, the need for development of quality pork the kind of pork that the housewife wants to buy, lean bacon. And of course, in addition to that, they encouraged the consumption of pork throughout that general area. More type of promotion work, as done by Sioux City, should be done in other communities of our state. We in Iowa recognize that when you buy a loaf of bread for 20 cents, there's only 2 cents worth of wheat in it. And for that reason, of course, the distribution of farm products can be and must be improved. In order to reduce that particular overhead, in order to give the farmer more of the nation's share of economy, they're entitled to it, and I feel by this type of program, we can bring it to them. And then in addition to that, the governors at their conference recommended to the U.S. Department of Agriculture and to Congress that we should prepare ourselves for future needs. In other words, today our population is 165 million in America. Yet, in 50 years, it will be in excess of 300 million. The population of South America today is about 300 million people. In 50 years, that population will be 600 million people. We, in 1900 and, or 2005, will be more concerned with production of food than we are in restriction of production. And for that reason, today we should help solve that particular problem. And I think that this reserve acre plan, which we represented and did recommend, is worthwhile because there we will be storing the fertility of our soil and preserve that fertility for future generations. You and I are interested in seeing that our children and that their children will have sufficient food. For world peace, you also need food. And this, of course, is the vital advantage of having the Soil Fertility Bank program. We, of course, since uh, the governor's conference, have had two other conferences in Iowa. On October 21, the Democrats came to Iowa, and I'm happy they did, because they made similar recommendations. And then, of course, this past week, the U.S. Senate Committee had some sub -hearing, subcommittee hearings. There, the farmers of Iowa were given a chance again to speak their minds and their voice. And again, they reiterated the necessity of the increase of the farm income. I'm quite certain that with increased consumption, with increased export, and by having some of our soil placed in a bank, a fertility bank, that eventually we can and will solve the farm price squeeze. <clears throat> we uh, in Iowa this past week had a very important conference. I think probably one of the most important conferences because it was the governor's conference on children and youth. We recognize that Iowa will be a great state in the future only if we have our children well informed and well educated. This conference showed that we were interested in the boys and the girls and we were very happy 
that all of the organizations in Iowa, such as church groups, educational groups, PTA, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and many other organizations participated in this worthwhile program. The conference brought forth this very important fact, that by having our citizens well informed and well prepared to assume the role of citizenship, that the future of Iowa and of America would be secured. This past week I appointed as the director of selective service a very fine young Iowan. He's Colonel Glenn Bowles, 37 years of age and he's a native Iowan having attended school at Agency and at Indianola, Iowa. He's a graduate of Simpson College. He served four and a half years during World War II and he left the Army after being an enlisted man initially as a lieutenant colonel. He was decorated three times while overseas and he is, in my opinion, an outstanding soldier and will serve the people of Iowa well as their director of selective service. On November 11, which is just a few days hence, we will celebrate in not only Iowa but in the nation Veterans Day. I believe it would be wise on that occasion to close down our businesses to the maximum in order that we can pay tribute to those who served us in time of war and in time of need. Certainly our paying tribute to them is a charitable act, but more than that, a very patriotic act. And I know that many of us feel that American freedom is the most precious thing. But it's one thing that we least discuss and that we give too little attention to. I therefore urge that all of our citizens do pay tribute to our veteran on Veterans Day on November 11th. In Iowa, we're very much interested in the improvement of our safety program. Since I last reported to you, many people have met their death on our highways. As of Friday, October the 28th, we had killed in Iowa 496 of our good citizens. And when you multiply that by $100,000 each, you can recognize that Iowa has lost approximately $50 million. But more than that, we've lost 496 good fathers or good mothers, sisters or brothers. And I urge you as a citizen of Iowa to participate in our safety program. Be alert, be cautious, be just a little more careful. Slow down, you live and your neighbor will live. While we have killed 496 so far this year, it is far less than we had killed a year ago. But even then, I think we have much more to do. You have been very kind and cooperated with us in the past. Won't you just be a little more careful in the future so that we can end the year of 1955 with a net saving of lives. It means much to you, but above all it means much to our boys and girls of this great state. It's been nice to visit with you again, and let me assure you of this. Iowa is a great state, and Iowa has a great future if we keep working for our boys and our girls. This has been another in a series of reports to the people of Iowa by Governor Leo Hoink. You're invited to be with us again two weeks from tonight at 9.15 for the next of these public service programs, The Governor Speaks.